Fortnite has always been extremely experimental in testing out what works and what doesn't, really utilizing the fan base to see what we'd love and what we might not, something that not many other game developers have taken the approach to up until Epic Games stepped up, showing that this model did in fact work and was an effective way to run the game. Like for example, we love the double pump, and we don't love Fred. Well, welcome back to Top 5 Gaming, everyone, where today we'll be breaking down the top five most powerful weapons and items that got removed. So I guess what I'm really trying to say here... Bring back the double pump. Also, sincerely, can we get 50,000 likes on this video for no reason right now? Also, subscribe because you love us, and uh, yeah, let's do this. Number five, the jetpack. The initial idea for a jetpack in Fortnite was favored by everyone. It's always been a great item in other games, so why not Fortnite? And when Epic Games added the jetpack on the 22nd of May, pretty much everyone was hunting down chests to find this legendary item. In all fairness, Epic Games did do what they thought was best to balance it out. It would take up one of your five inventory spaces, have a limited fuel gauge, could only be used in short bursts, and takes a couple of seconds to recharge. The thing is, with building being such a strong aspect of the game, high ground is usually king. But introduce a jetpack into that mix and it can completely change the style of play. It wouldn't matter if you're up against an insane builder when you can just jetpack up above them. Squads became your personal feeding ground if you managed to find a jetpack and an RPG. That combo could push through squads like a tsunami if you used it in the right hands. It didn't take long for people to start realizing just how overpowering the jetpack was and how much it had changed Fortnite. They fixed a few bugs and even updated it a little to try and nerf its limits, but it still couldn't prevent just how overpowering a jetpack can be in this style of game. Only eight days after they released it, though, they vaulted it. Well, at least from normal battle royale modes, anyway. For a brief period afterwards, it could still be found in Playground, and honestly, the jetpack was perfect for that game mode. For those people trying to build epic structures, racetracks, death run courses, and everything else, the jetpack could get it all done in at least half the time without having to add ugly scaffolding all over it. Since then, we've seen it briefly in more recent LTMs to fit its style of gameplay, but as for the normal modes, it's just way too overpowered in its current state. Number 4, C4. Something you'll begin to notice with Epic Games is how they've managed to make us focus on nearly every single item and weapon in the game at one time or another. More than you do in most games, anyway. Most have had their own special instructions as new releases and even the original weapons have been brought to the light with the constant updates and tweaks. Fortnite seem to be responding efficiently to how the community are reacting to these items. They make constant adjustments based on the community's feelings about certain overpowered weapons or items, and of course they have their own intentions for the game, but their reaction to the community has made for a brilliant outcome. Although not not everything can be fixed, the remote explosives were a prime example of this. It was loved by the community, but at the same time, they had to admit just how overpowering they could be. Apparently, Fortnite thought so too as they constantly attempted to buff it, nerf it, and then nerf it a little more until vaulting it altogether. They were brought to the game on the 14th of March which would cause 70 damage to an opponent and all seemed to be all going well with them. People were setting baited traps and turtling became a lot more difficult to pull off. Then the May 16th update was dropped and the C4 became mini flying nukes. They would now explode everything within range of the blast from all sides, not just the one side of the wall or build the C4 was on. You could throw them further more rapidly and detonate them almost instantly if you needed to. They became pretty insane. Eventually they reduced the amount you could carry to six to balance out its power. It didn't really work so they tried it so that you could only detonate the C4 once it had landed, but but it still seemed to affect the game just a bit too much, and for now, it seems Epic have vaulted it from all game modes except for Playground. Number 3, the drum gun. Now, for any players that really got to experience the drum gun, most of you will probably all say the same thing. It was by far one of the most satisfying guns to get kills with, but was a bit too over the top. Pulling out the drum gun and moving down a whole squad was great when you could do around 26 to 27 damage just for a body shot. Then add the 50 rounds in your magazine, and nothing but raw skill or luck is really gonna stop you. It was a solid close-range weapon that finally gave an alternative to shotguns, but that amount of damage with that amount of ammo made it a bit too powerful. It was introduced on the 3rd of July and lasted for a good couple of months before getting vaulted on the 11th of September. You could find it as an uncommon or rare weapon in pretty much any of your normal chests and amongst the floor loot, so you can see it wasn't exactly a gun that was hard to come by. Near the end of matches, all you'd mostly hear were a few shotgun shots and plenty of drum guns going off. It demolished buildings, destroyed opponents, and could wipe out squads with ammo to spare. Halfway through its time with us, Epic did attempt to balance the update, and they reduced the fall-off range damage, decreased accuracy when aiming and jumping, and they even reduced its spawn rate by 40% but it just couldn't balance out for those close range fights without basically turning into an SMG, which surprisingly enough, we now have instead. Number two, the bounce pad. This is the type of item removal that shows Fortnite have intentions for the style of combat 
that we're still trying to understand. The bounce pad was probably one of the most liked items in the game. You could get into those epic build battles without worrying about getting shot down, use them to close the gap on your opponents, and they were commonly seen a lot for trick shot, which makes a lot of sense considering the amount of airtime you get from an item that doesn't even take up an inventory slot. We first saw the bouncer on the 5th of June, and throughout its time, the bounce pads barely got updated. There were some very small adjustments that don't make too much of a difference, like reducing the supply crate drop rate from 22% to 15%. Not anything too significant, but then out of the blue, on the 27th of September, alongside a whole bunch of items, the bouncers got vaulted. Most people were caught off guard by this and have no idea why. There has been no real negative action from the community to bounce pads, so why remove them? You can be sure there's some master plan and action in Epic Games for the style of combat with removals like this. Perhaps they don't want us to have that easy way out in a build fight. They're taking away out safety nets, so to speak. For an item that caused no damage, it was definitely still powerful, and for now, you can only find it in Playground or on a port of fortress Honorable mentions! Honorable mention number one is the Guided Missile. The Guided Missile has been back and forth more times than the Chuckle Brothers. It was released on the 14th of March. At the time, rocket riding was still pretty popular, so the idea of being able to self-rocket ride using the Guided Missiles was welcomed by everyone. You could find at least a few players in every lobby attempting rocket riding themselves with this if they were lucky enough to find one. It was all fun and games, but when used seriously, it became quite a serious threat to competitive Fortnite. At first, it would cause around 105 to 110 damage, depending on the rarity, so one shot from this if you hadn't found the shield yet and you were gonna you'd find plenty of players landed a location if someone found this weapon they would often just sit in a hole picking off everyone in town from their safety spot and with the 18 second fly time you had a lot more range and opportunity you'd imagine it's easy to block one missile but one of the sneakier tactics you would find at the time was people firing multiple guided missiles lined up behind each other most people wouldn't expect the second or third and don't block quick enough. No matter the tactic, the guided missile created a non-stop threat that Fortnite didn't seem to like. They tried to reduce the missile's turn time and speed, but barely a month after its release, they decided to vault it altogether, stating that they share our concerns about it. On July 31st, the guided missile was re-released with a whole list of adjustments. Player damage was now around 74, and fly time, speed, reload, and many other settings had been reduced. It's one of those few overpowered items that get worked out and brought back into the game, or at least Fortnite thinks so. Do you think it's unbalanced? Honorable mention number two, the Smoke Grenade. One of the earliest items to be added to the game on the 28th of September 2017 were the Smoke Grenades. And to be fair, they lasted all the way up until April when they got vaulted after being one of the most powerful non-damaging items in the game. When your teammates are down, you can throw in the smokes, and if they can't see the enemy, they can't see you, right? You and all your mates are now practically invisible, and you're able to go in and get the revives. Well, I mean, not really. To be honest, as soon as you pop that smoke, the enemy just lights up the area with a rain of bullets, and you're in the smoke. You can't see where the bullets are going to come from if by chance you don't happen to get shot. The smoke only lasts for around 10 seconds, the same time it takes to revive someone, so by the time you do revive your friend, you're both left exposed. Well, maybe it's good for rushing an enemy, maybe? I don't think so. Throw in the smokes to close that gap undetected. Okay, fair enough. That did work pretty well if you didn't want to waste material. But when you come out, it takes a second to figure out where your opponents are through all the smoke, whereas the opponent just has to shoot at a black blur that's coming out, meaning they nearly always got first shot. This definitely takes the award for an item that, while could sometimes be useful, mostly in those awkward close combat scenarios where nobody really has a gun and you're just aimlessly kind of running through the smoke and it's purely chance who sees who first but I don't think that this thing will be missed. Not that we know it's there because, I mean, it's the smoke, it's hidden. Ooh. Number one, the Zapatron. Probably the almighty titan of vaulted weapons, we have the Zapatron. When we got supply drops introduced to Fortnite on the 25th of September, this weapon had around a 5% chance of spawning. Considering the game's release and massive attention, even then, it's surprising we didn't see more of it. Some of you probably haven't heard of the Zapatron, and 99% of you probably never even got to try it. How do we know? Actually, it's because there's barely any footage of it. The only real footage we've seen of this weapon is a clip from Alonix TV. The Zapatron is an energy-based sniper. You can fire electrical bursts in short blasts or charge it up to fire one powerful shot. It was even stated to have insanely rare ammo, so you'd have to limit your shots. It was essentially a railgun, but barely a few days later, they vaulted it. You can see in the clip it's pretty powerful, but to remove it only a few days later was a bit quick. Apparently, the main reason they removed it was due to it not fitting the current style. Now I'd like to know what you think as well down in the comments because Fortnite do keep an eye out on the community, and if they see an interest in something, they could pursue it. But I, for one, wouldn't mind seeing some energy-based weapons in the game. We've already got magical rifts and a lightning cube, 
So to see an electrical based weapon at this time could now fit the style. There's even rumors of coding being found for an item called the Rail Sniper. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Well, that's all the time we have for today, guys. Click that like button if you haven't. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Push notifications on. Don't forget to keep it here on Top 5 Gaming.